For Ohio State, good things come in threes. Henderson, Harrison, and that defense. When those three things are clicking, so are the Buckeyes. From L.A. to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Ten Ten. In the past, when we talked about Buckeye football, now that's Ohio State football. We talked about quarterbacks slinging it, big, explosive plays on the offensive side of the football. But when you talk about Buckeye football, playing Ohio State football this season, it's all about the defense. And Ohio State succeeds when they have a run-first offense. That's just how the Buckeyes are built. This is not a bad thing. This is not something that fans of the Scarlet and Gray should necessarily be concerned about. Maybe Kyle will get to a level of a Justin Fields, of a C.J. Stroud down the road, but right now, the success of this team depends upon the defense and depends upon the run game and taking pressure off of Kyle McCord. The return of Travion Henderson in this game was a big time key for the Buckeyes to really provide more balance to this offense. No disrespect to a deep running back room in Columbus, Ohio, but Travion is different. He's a different kind of playmaker. He provides a different kind of explosiveness in a run game. He provides a different kinds of juice to boom, hit the hole, make guys miss, get 20, get 30. And then of course you saw him bust it loose for a big game ceiling touchdown. When Henderson is able to run the football effectively, defenses try to come up to stop the run. And that's when Marvin Harrison Jr. can really do his damage. Throw the ball in the general vicinity and he's going to come down with it. When defenses have to come in and commit more resources to the run game and you got the best receiver maybe in a generation out on the outside in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, you can do so many things with that, right? He ran that route, that touchdown that was the game-winning touchdown against uh, Penn State. He ran that route. You go across the middle. It's very difficult uh, to, to keep a guy on his hip pocket in that type of situation. It's very difficult to defend Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, over the top, uh, deeper across the middle. It, it's so difficult, and it opens up dramatically when this Buckeye offense gets it going in the run game. Look, I know Wisconsin's not the most explosive offense out there. They've got their issues. But Ohio State's defense is still, I believe that is the best unit on this football team, which is saying something considering the school you're talking about, the school that's been the most explosive offense in the Big Ten for so many years throughout the best decade or so. But this defense, man, they continue to bring it each and and every single week. This offense is not the explosive, big play, playmaking offense that we've seen in Columbus, Ohio the last few years, which is why this defense is that much more important right now. If this defense continues to play the way they are right now, Ohio State is most certainly a championship team. This was just another example that Ohio State's defense can carry the Buckeyes along with an offense that's run first and hits plays in the pass game over the top. This is the formula for Ohio State. Jim Knowles has done a tremendous job with this defense over his past coaching stints. It's year two where that defense really hits. And boy, is that defense hitting right now for Knowles and the Scarlet and Gray. Let's talk Badgers. I'm not a moral victory guy, but you can take some positives out of this one for Wisconsin, especially on the defensive side of the football. That's a unit, remember, earlier in the season. Schools like Buffalo were moving the football on them. Schools like Georgia Southern were moving the football on them. This is a defense, Mike Tressel's defense, is getting better, slowly but surely. This team overall is getting better, slowly but surely. This is not a big viral jump for Wisconsin. This is a team that is taking incremental steps, especially on defense. 
and you can take a lot of confidence away from the turnovers you forced in this game and from the way you defended a school like Ohio State in this game. Marvin Harrison Jr. is a generational wide receiver. He's going to get his in almost every single game that he plays. Trevion Henderson, maybe he's not the generational talent of Marvin, but he's still pretty damn good. Wisconsin continues to improve on the defensive side of the football. And hanging around with a school like Ohio State, I think is going to give the Badgers more confidence now as they tackle a lot of these Big Ten West teams and try to make a run to Indianapolis. Braden Locke, he is the future in Madison. This kid is a redshirt freshman. And like you would see out of a redshirt freshman with the talent of Braden Locke, you see some flashes, you see some hits, but you also see some misses. But that hits gets you really excited if you're a Wisconsin Badger fan. Locke is far along for where he is from an experience standpoint, right? He's just two years removed from high school. And this is a new system. And this is a new scheme transferring from Mississippi State. Of course, Phil Longo was at North Carolina last year. But you look at last week against Illinois. I think you really started to see that confidence Braden Locke really get his feet under him in that system. Now you look at this game against Ohio State, kind of like what I said about the defense. Although they didn't get the victory, although Braden Locke didn't have the best stat line in the world, there are some things that he can take away on how Wisconsin at times move the football on this Ohio State team. Of course, a big factor in this matchup were injuries. And of course, it's Braylon Allen. Right now, you lose Tanner Mordecai. You lose Braylon Allen. And that really took away any really threat in a run game, right? You put in Jackson Aker. Kate Yacomelli is in there as well. They don't provide the threat. They don't scare anybody. Okay, people know what Braylon Allen can do. At that point, when Allen goes down, Jackson Aker provided a couple of things in the run game, but you knew more weight was going to go on the shoulders of Braden Locke. And I think Braden needs that balance. He needs that solid run game to kind of take the pressure off of him in certain situations. I think he plays well. Look at how he played against Illinois. If Locke can continue to improve, if Locke can continue to progress, his future is extremely bright in Madison. These are very key reps that Braden, Luke Fickle, and Phil Longo did not think that Braden Locke would be getting right now. And of course, this was always going to be a one-year deal for Tanner Mordecai. So these are very key reps. And if he can continue to build that confidence, get some really good games down the stretch against some of these Big Ten West opponents... This is a guy that you got to watch out for throwing the football in the Big Ten in the future. These are very important times in Madison, Wisconsin. Chesma Lucy goes down. Tanner Mordecai goes down. Braylon Allen goes down. Now what are we going to find out about some of these depth guys at Wisconsin? What are we going to find out going forward about this Badger program? This is still a Wisconsin team that I believe is in a pretty solid spot. This is a Badger team that can still accomplish a lot. The key for them going forward will be the run game. What's going to happen with the injury of Braylon Allen? If Braylon Allen can't go, they got to figure things out to provide some balance in this offense. Otherwise, maybe Phil Longo is going to get his wish and the dairy raid will <laughs> exist when Wisconsin might be pitching it around the yard with the young quarterback. Buckeye fans, I know Kyle McCord is a roller coaster right now with some of these inaccurate throws with some of these turnovers. And then he comes back and has that great game winning drive against Notre Dame, makes some big throws against Penn state. It's going to continue to go up and down. I think for a first year starter like Kyle McCord, but investing in that run game, you don't need to be Ohio state under Justin Fields, under CJ Stroud, under Dwayne Haskins, under JT Barrett. That's not what this Buckeye team is. This Ohio State team is different. And you need to feed into that a little bit with your play calling. You need to be physical on offense at the line of scrimmage. Let Travion Henderson eat. 
and then hit the big plays over the top. I think that's going to help Kyle McCord. I think that's going to help this Buckeye team as a whole. I want to hear what you guys think of this matchup. Buckeyes win. They're undefeated going into November. Can they keep it rolling? And Wisconsin, is this a team that despite their injuries, can still contend for the Big Ten West Championship. Leave all your thoughts in the comments below. I'm Big Ten Ted. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.